So when we're building dynamic blocks, we've really got two methods of defining the parameters that we want to change. We can use parametrics or we can use parameters and actions. I'm just going to take this existing wet bar here. I'm just going to right click on it. I'm going to go into the block editor. So it's already a block. I just want to add some um, configurable dynamics to it is what I want. Now you can see here there's actually quite a bit of geometry going on in here. And to have to step through here and define all the constraints and all the dimensions to to fully define the geometry for me to be able to, you know, be able to to change the sizes on it um, is going to take some time. So in this case, in this example, what I'm better off using is I'm actually better off using parameters and actions because then I can use things like stretches and moves and rotates. And just like in AutoCAD, I can do crossing and windows and selections to select my objects to manipulate them. So with parameters and actions, there's, there's always two steps. You define the parameter, then you define the action. Parameter sets, on the other hand, are really just a combination of the two. So it's kind of like canned macros that you can just select from, and it'll apply the, the, the parameter and the action. You basically just got to go in and, and finish the detail. So in this case, what I want to do is I want to define a linear parameter. So what I'm looking to do here is I want to be able to define from here to there, and I want to be able to define the width of this. Now I'm going to select it here, and in my property palette, I'm going to give this a name. So I'm going to call this, this is the bar depth, and I'm going to add a description. I'll show where the description comes in later. So, you know, adjusts the depth of the bar. And what I want here is that, you know, this, this bar, we're not going to build whatever size, you know, uh, the person wants. We do have some restrictions on this. So what I'm going to do is actually apply a list to this. And I'm going to say that it's available in 26, 32, 36, and 50, um, in this case, inch increments is what it's available in. I also don't want the user of the block to be able to stretch it in either direction. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the number of grips to one here. Now it is order dependent. Now if I had screwed up, what I would have to do is just do the old flip a -roo, just take the grip, move it over there, move that one there. What I'm also going to do here, since I'm going to be adding more, is I'm going to take just the, the grip here, and I'm just going to move the grip down below, because what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to add another linear parameter across the top here, and I don't want the two of them overlapping, so I've just moved that out of the way there. Um, so this is off to the side there a little bit. I haven't actually affected the parameter, just where the grip appears. So let's do another linear parameter. So I want the linear parameter to be from there to there. Again here, we'll come in here, we'll change this. So this will be the bar length is what it's going to be. Ah, actually, let's call it width. Maybe that'll make a little bit more sense. We'll call this width. And this time what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to put an increment because I want the distance increment to be 2. The minimum I'm going to put in here is I'm actually going to put 36, which is actually the current width. Now, it doesn't have to be. I could actually go smaller. Uh, I, could, I could make the minimum 2. I mean, it, it doesn't really matter. And the maximum here, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to do 72 to be the max. So you can see it puts the blue ticks there just so you have an idea of, of you know, the range that this is going to move in. Now at this point, notice the yellow exclamation marks. It's not a moment of panic. It's just telling you that there's no stretch actions or no actions assigned to these. So I'm going to go to the action tab here and I'm going to apply a stretch action. And I'm going to select my parameter. Here's the grip that I want to locate, so as long as the red circle appears, I can click. And now what I'm going to do is specify the stretch frame. Now the stretch frame is not really the objects, it's kind of the window of influence. It's, it's you know, which parameter, which grip, and kind of where within the block are we going to be making our changes. So in this case, since I'm modifying this area here, and I want to include the sink as well, is my, my area here and you can do it from right to left or left to right up and down it doesn't matter because it's not a crossing or a window it's just defining the rectangular area so this is the area here that i want to include so you can see i've got the grip um, that i want to modify in here i've got the object the kind of the area of the objects i want and now what i'm going to do is i'm actually going to do a crossing selection now i'm doing crossing specifically because it's a stretch so any object that's crossed by it will get stretched and anything that's completely within it will move. So the sink's going to move completely as well as these grip points up here because I want those grip points to move as well because I don't want to stretch this out and then my grip points are left way over here, right? So I want that all constrained within there. So I've selected my, my objects and we can see now that the um, stretch action appears here. 
So if I pick that stretch action, I kind of got the same option. So I can come in here and say this is actually a stretch on the on the width, and I can give it a more appropriate name. Now this, the name of the stretch won't show up when you're actually using the block. This is just more internal. It's something that comes in here to modify this because you can end up with you know, dozens of these actions depending on the complexity of your geometry. So I'm going to do a stretch again, this time on the bar depth. That's the grip I want. In this case, what I'm looking to do here is I just want this area here and I want to select these objects. So there's the objects I have defined and we can see it's gone through and set those. All right, so now I've got those actions set. Let's go and actually test the block. So I'm going to click test block. Here's my block. Let's just move this over a little bit. And notice I can take this and notice it's only going 26, 32, 36 as I defined. And it's only allowing me to go up to 72 and back down to 36. So I can see the block for the most part is functioning as I wanted. I do notice one small thing. Notice my base point here, my insertion point is staying in the original location. In this case, I probably should move that to the bottom, but this is an opportunity to go back and actually modify my, my stretch action and actually include that in there. So what I'm gonna do is from the parameters tab here, and one thing I should mention, if you don't have this palette, it's this button right here, which turns this palette off or on. So I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna add a base point parameter because I'm actually gonna define my base point at that grip there. And actually now that I look at this, this one also needs to have just one grip. I wonder if I still have that exclamation mark on there. Okay, so now I've defined that base point parameter. So it's now the insertion point of, of my block. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to my action here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click on here and I'm actually going to modify the selection set. And what I want to do is I want to keep my, my frame kind of the same area here. But what I want to do is I want to include that base point. So I've just gone through and just picked that point to specify that. So let's now go, let's test the block. Let's take this, let's move this, and we can see now that my base point, my insertion point is moving with it. So you can go back and you can add and remove objects from that particular selection sets. All right, so I also said I wanted to move those bottles. So let's come in here and let's do that. So let's take this and let's assign a um, point parameter. So point, and that's exactly what it is. It's just simply defining the point. Now in this case, I don't want this to show up in the property palette. So when I go and work with this block, um, I don't want this to show up in the property palette. And I'm just gonna call this um, bottle one. That's what I'm gonna do. Okay, well now that's defined, I'm gonna go to my actions tab. I'm gonna define a move because I wanna take this one here and I want to move these objects and we can see it's gone through and assigned that action. That's it. Now I've got a free for all to move that ball where I want. Well, if I look at the parameter sets here, notice that we can also assign kind of grid moves where I could limit X, Y, or polar moves. And it's just a combination of assigning those together. So it's a combination of a polar or an X, Y. So with the point grip, you're really just, it's a free for all. You, you can't limit it, you can't restrict it. Whereas if you use a X, Y, or polar, you can actually specify this can only move at 30 degrees or you know 30 or 15 degrees. So you have a little bit more control about what's gonna happen. All right, so I'm gonna come in here now and let's close the editor. Let's save the changes. And now what I can do is come in here and notice that when I pick this block here, notice that bar depth and bar width are showing up. And notice I can come in here and I can modify this um, exactly the same as when I use my grips. Now, if I was to go to bar width and I was to type in um, you know, 75 on that, what it's gonna do, it's gonna to round to the closest value. So if I was to put 69 in there, we can see it rounds to 68 because there's only a two inch increment on that. Okay, well now I can take this bottle and like I said, notice I can take that bottle and I can pretty much move it wherever I want. So you can see how I was able to go in there and change that. So there you have it. There's the basics or the basis of parameters and actions. You assign your parameter, you add your actions, um, and then you can go back and put restrictions on the parameter.